Sam Altman is quickly becoming a household name. At 38 years old, the co-founder and CEO of OpenAI has already accomplished more than most people do in a lifetime, probably even two. At age 19, Sam dropped out of Stanford to build Looped, a location-based social networking app which was acquired by Green Dot seven years later for $43.4 million. Looped has raised a decent chunk of capital from the likes of Y Combinator, Sequoia, and NEA, so the exit didn't necessarily land Sam on a huge rainfall, but it did prove to Silicon Valley that this young kid from the Midwest was here to stir things up. And Paul Graham, one of YC's founders, took a particular liking to him. In 2014, Paul chose Sam to succeed him as YC's president, despite the fact that Sam was only 31 at the time, 20 years Paul's junior. He is going to be the boss. I'm not running the show anymore. It's Sam's show now. Mark Andreessen has said that under Sam, the level of YC's ambition has gone up 10x. As president of Y Combinator, Sam observed thousands of founders including Brian Chesky from Airbnb, the Collison brothers from Stripe, Tony Hsu from DoorDash, and Brian Armstrong from Coinbase. Sam has unquestionably thought a lot about what it takes to generate large amounts of wealth and create impactful products. I've studied Sam Altman like a maniac for the past few weeks and read as much about him as I possibly could. In today's video, I'll share what I've learned with a particular focus on his incredible essay, How to Be Successful. I remember when Elon Musk took me on a tour of the SpaceX factory many years ago. He talked in detail about manufacturing every part of the rocket, but the thing that sticks in memory was the look of absolute certainty on his face when he talked about sending large rockets to Mars. I left thinking, huh, so that's the benchmark for what conviction looks like. That's Sam Altman reflecting on one of his early encounters with Elon. By now, we of course know that the two of them would go on to become good friends and business partners, having co-founded OpenAI in 2015. And I think a big reason why they were so drawn to each other was that they both envisioned a future that was so drastically different from the present moment. No one in their right mind today would question Elon or Sam's conviction for their respective visions, whether that's colonizing Mars or ushering responsible AI into the mainstream. This unwavering belief in oneself is an absolute necessity according to Sam. He writes that the most successful people I know believe in themselves almost to the point of delusion. Self-belief is immensely powerful. You should have almost too much self-belief. I find that really interesting. The advice to believe in yourself is obviously a platitude by now. Every self-help book is plastered with it. But there's something unique about how Sam puts it. I love that he concretizes the level of self-belief required and encourages us to push it so far that it almost, and that's an important key word, almost becomes delusional. The vast majority of us probably underestimate what we're capable of, so the idea of almost having too much self-belief is fascinating to me. Does that mean that feedback and criticism should be ignored? Absolutely not. Truth-seeking is critical. Back to Sam. Self-belief must be balanced with self-awareness. I used to hate criticism of any sort and actively avoided it. Now I always listen to it with the assumption that it's true and then decide if I want to act on it or not. Truth-seeking is hard and often painful, but it's what separates self-belief from self-delusion. I've heard this notion echoed by successful founders and VCs many times before, and I'm sure you have as well. The very best entrepreneurs and thinkers seek out feedback and listen to everyone, but then decide for themselves which path to walk and how long to stay on it. Sam writes, Almost always, the people who say, I'm going to keep going until this works, and no matter what the challenges are, I'm going to figure them out, and mean it, go on to succeed. They are persistent long enough to give themselves a chance for luck to go their way. This notion of figuring it out is something Sam talks about pretty often. This idea that even if I'm not qualified on paper, even if I haven't solved this problem before, even if this problem feels like it's going to kill the company, which many problems will feel that way, um, this spirit among the team of you know what, we've got the people we need, we're gonna figure this out, we're gonna get this done. Uh, that's super important. So why are some people able to figure things out more than others? According to Sam, they are incredibly optimistic and willful. He writes, A big secret is that you can bend the world to your will a surprising percentage of the time. Most people don't even try. They just accept that things are the way they are. People have an enormous capacity to make things happen. A combination of self-doubt, giving up early, and not pushing hard enough prevents most people from ever reaching anywhere near their potential. Sam is a technical genius, but I never realized that he was such a good writer. I love the mental image of bending the world to your will. The world is pretty rigid. As humans, we tend to resist change because it requires us to confront uncertainty. 
Our brains are wired to seek out familiarity as a means of survival. So when something disrupts that sense of stability, we push back. And so, as entrepreneurs, we're going to face a lot of resistance. Sam writes that, the more ambitious you are, the more the world will try to tear you down. So how do we push through all that resistance? There are a couple of things we need to do, according to Sam. And they're unfortunately not taught in school, so it's up to each of us to cultivate them on our own. One of which is to learn how to think independently. Holding contrarian views is critical in order to have a meaningful impact and to create something of value. If we think like everyone else, we'll act like everyone else and so we'll get results like everyone else. This isn't just true for founders but for investors as well. Markets are efficient and being able to think independently from the herd is the only way to consistently make money. And Sam encourages us to get started on this as soon as possible. He writes, cultivate this early, independent thinking that is, as you get more data points that your judgment is good and you can consistently deliver results, trust yourself more. If you don't believe in yourself, it's hard to let yourself have contrarian ideas about the future but that is where most value gets created. But believing in ourselves and thinking independently is not nearly enough to bend the world to our will. We also need to become incredibly good at sales. This is something Munger and Naval often talk about as well. Persuasion is a core foundational skill that everyone should learn. Sam explains, all great careers to some degree become sales jobs. You have to evangelize your plans to customers, prospective employees, the press, investors, etc. This requires an inspiring vision, strong communication skills, some degree of charisma, and evidence of execution ability. Getting good at communication, particularly written communication, is an investment worth making. Well, that explains why Sam's writing is so on point. It's a skill he's practiced over a long time. He writes, Getting good at sales is like improving at any other skill. Anyone can get better at it with deliberate practice. But for some reason, perhaps because it feels distasteful, many people treat it as something unlearnable. You and I talk a lot about compounding on this channel and the importance of playing long-term games. Every person I admire, from Buffett to Munger to Naval, all echo the same thing. And Sam Altman is no different. He writes, Compound yourself. Compounding is magic. Look for it everywhere. Exponential curves are the key to wealth generation. One of my favorite charts of all time is this representation of Warren Buffett's wealth over time. It's astonishing. Buffett earned the majority of his wealth after the age of 50. He just let compounding do its thing. There's a reason why Einstein called compound interest the greatest mathematical discovery of all time. And Sam Altman agrees that this is an incredible way to build massively valuable businesses. A medium-sized business that grows 50% in value every year becomes huge in a very short amount of time. Few businesses in the world have true network effects and extreme scalability. But with technology, more and more will. It's worth a lot of effort to find them and create them. But Sam doesn't just encourage us to compound our business ventures. He tells us to build a compound machine out of ourselves. This makes us hard to compete with. Pay close attention to what he writes in this next section. It's a little long, but bear with me. You also want to be an exponential curve yourself. You should aim for your life to follow an ever-increasing up into the right trajectory. It's important to move towards a career that has a compounding effect. Most careers progress fairly linearly. You don't want to be in a career where people who have been doing it for two years can be as effective as people who have been doing it for 20 years. Your rate of learning should always be high. As your career progresses, each unit of work you do should generate more and more results. There are many ways to get this leverage, such as capital, technology, brand, network effects, and managing people. This is an excellent reminder for us to think strategically about our careers, and it reminds me of Naval's advice to pick an industry and ideally staying in that industry. By doing so, we can reap the rewards from compounding our knowledge, skills, and network. Every time we switch an industry, say from finance to consumer healthcare, which I did when I was 25, we have to start over. It disrupts the compound effect. It may still be worth it, of course, as long as it's part of a longer-term strategy. And a long-term view is critical, according to Sam. He writes, I think the biggest competitive advantage in business, either for a company or for an individual's career, is long-term thinking, with a broad view of how different systems in the world are going to come together. One of the notable aspects of compound growth is that the furthest out years are the most important. In a world where almost no one takes a truly long-term view, the market richly rewards those who do. So if we're optimizing for the long run, we should be willing to sacrifice the short term. We should trade being short-term low status for being long-term high status, which most people seem unwilling to do. This is what all self-help literature boils down to, choosing the long-term over the short-term. And taking risk is an important part of that. For me personally, I'm in a phase right now where I'm trying to figure out what's next, so this next segment really spoke to me. Make it easy to take risks. 
Most people overestimate risk and underestimate reward. Taking risks is important because it's impossible to be right all the time. You have to try many things and adapt quickly as you learn more. It's often easier to take risks early in your career, you don't have much to lose, and you potentially have a lot to gain. Once you've gotten yourself to a point where you have your basic obligations covered, you should try to make it easy to take risks. Look for small bets you can make where you lose 1x if you're wrong but make 100x if it works. Then make a bigger bet in that direction. But here's the thing, once we start experiencing some success, it becomes harder and harder to escape that cushy lifestyle. I think it was Nassim Taleb who said that the three most harmful addictions are heroin, carbohydrates and a monthly salary. This is exactly what Sam is getting at when he writes, Don't save up for too long though. At YC, we've often noticed a problem with founders that have spent a lot of time working at Google or Facebook. When people get used to a comfortable life, a predictable job, and a reputation of succeeding at whatever they do, it gets very hard to leave that behind. And people have an incredible ability to always match their lifestyle to next year's salary. Even if they do leave, the temptation to return is great. It's easy and human nature to prioritize short-term gain and convenience over long-term fulfillment. Anyone who's ever quit a job to build a business can probably relate to that feeling. I know I have. Five years ago, I quit my high-paying job on Wall Street to launch a startup. I was forced to move out of my apartment in Manhattan and back in with my parents in Sweden. It sucked at first, but the company has done relatively well. As I think about what to build next, I find tremendous inspiration in what Sam writes here. It's useful to focus on adding another zero to whatever you define as your success metric. Money, status, impact on the world, or whatever. I'm willing to take as much time as needed between projects to find my next thing. But I always want it to be a project that, if successful, will make the rest of my career look like a footnote. Well, Sam has already made his previous experience at Loop and YC look like a footnote. OpenAI is already changing the world, but I doubt Sam is anywhere close to being done. Sam Altman is an incredible entrepreneur, and I encourage you to study him in detail. Reading his full essay is a great place to start. I've linked it in the description below. That's it for today. Slightly different format than usual. Let me know if you like this format or not, and any other thoughts you have about Sam Altman. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.